Hi and welcome to Find Your Voice TV, where we explore the physiological, the psychological and the creative elements that go into your performances. My name is Emanuela Grace, I'm your vocal coach and a performance expert. And today I'm here with the amazing Kimberly Smith, author of The Moderately Tortured Artist, and I am so excited to have her here. Kimberly, welcome. Hi, thanks for having me. You are so welcome. So you're a Melbourne based singing teacher, but you also have quite a big online presence, which is what led me to find you in the first place <laughs> and uh, girl crush stalk you for about the first, <laughs> for about the first year of our relationship. Uh, you are also the author of The Moderately Tortured Artist. I just, um, for camera, wanted to compare my copy <laughs> uh, here with Kim. Kim, can you show us what a new copy? So this is a copy of the book that's been schlepped around to all of my clients after I've read it a number of times myself. And we're going to cover some of the amazing content in this later. But Kim, first, you know, I've got a couple of questions for you. Having mm. read your book uh, and, and, you know, spent quite a bit of time eating tapas and drinking wine with you as we so got to amazing. know each other. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, tell us a little bit about how you came to write this book in the first place. Well, I've, I've always had a, a love for writing, but it really came out of the book that I wish that I'd had when I was growing up and learning to sing. So yeah. particularly when I was studying it at university and everything became really serious. And I found that a lot of my students and other musicians that I know really needed something that covered all of the self-doubt and the fear and how we handle criticism and comparison and auditions and all of the mental baggage that kind of comes with being a creative and putting yourself out there. Um, and the reason that it has the tagline of a permission slip um, to allow you to create epic wholehearted music is because people are not giving themselves permission to actually enjoy their music when they start becoming serious about it. You know, all of it becomes about how do I get better and how do I learn more, which is fantastic, but it kind of starts to become more and more, or what I found, um, more and more a chore. And so people are giving up because they're not experiencing that joy anymore. So I really wanted yeah. to tackle that. Yeah, I see that a lot as well. And I think it's not just with musicians. I think it's uh, across the board with performers and people, you know, at Find Your Voice, we work with people on the performances they give in their daily life. And yeah. it's not just about, you know, being an artist. I think a lot of people go through those feelings of doubt and giving themselves a hard time. Uh, there was one bit I read in the book, if I can just bring this up, that I really <laughs> loved. Um, a big part of what we talk about at Find Your Voice is accountability when we're looking at the psychological elements. Yeah. So you said, I wish I could blame my initial music teachers for my lack of progress and motivation. I wish I could blame them for my lack of understanding around vocal technique and how to improve it, but I can't. <laughs> our progress, our journey is our responsibility. Keeping interested in our music or in our performance or in our journey is our responsibility. And if you're not getting what you need from a coach, you need to tell them they're not psychic as much as we try to be. I think accountability is a really important part of what we do if we want to grow and move forward. So I asked you a while ago uh, over a glass of wine or via email, I can't remember which, what was the most common roadblock that you see people uh, building for themselves and also what is the most common roadblock for you to overcome and you replied I don't have any roadblocks <laughs> I just deal with them <laughs> I think that yeah I haven't had a lot of what I consider really serious roadblocks that have been thrown at me in my life I've been very lucky I try to um, get inside my own head and try to untangle why is it that I feel like this where has this come from like I, I just kind of get off on doing that yeah. in some ways. Right. So really delving into the psychological elements, which is something that I think a lot of uh, singing teachers don't go near. Yeah. And it's one of the reasons from what I've seen of the work you do that really sets you apart as a singing teacher is you'll go there. I love going there. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, tell me your life story. Tell me about all of your, you know, baggage. Just throw Let's it out at me. Let's get some context. Yeah, well, and that's so important because um, my singing teachers that I had growing up were like, I don't want to touch that with a 10 foot barge pole. And I understand that. I understand that a lot of people don't want to kind of blur the lines, I suppose. But I find that with my students, the roadblocks really start to manifest in their technique. And if yeah, you don't know absolutely. about what that person is going through emotionally and um, yeah, the, the stuff that they're carrying from their past, you really can't get past it with saying, oh, do this or relax your tongue or whatever it is because they're doing it from a very emotional 
um, place and they might not even know what that is. Yeah, and if you don't deal with it, it's going to keep it coming. I no. jokingly <laughs> wanted to call today's interview Haters Gonna Hate. <laughs> Name check Taylor Swift, thank you. Um, because, you know, feedback from people, especially unsolicited feedback, uh, both in real life from teachers and people in authority positions with you and also online yeah. can be really daunting. Yeah. And it can be heartbreaking when you uh, get feedback that is not that nice or that is just downright mean. Mm. So what are some of your tips, uh, you know, for dealing with feedback that's unsolicited or um, perhaps even unintentionally hurtful? Yeah. Um, well, that I would say, and we've had this conversation yeah, before, um, about the roadblocks that I most commonly see in others and, and in myself. And one of them is that the huge fear of not being good enough. Yeah, and I right. think that that can manifest in a couple of different ways. And I'm just going to do two completely different camps here. But one is that people were told by, you know, a choir teacher when they were seven that they can't sing or that they should mime because they're out of tune or their dad said that they weren't musically talented or whatever it is. And so they hold on to that and they say, I'm not good enough because I wasn't born talented or I'm, I'm not very musical. And the other camp that I find still experiences the not good enough are the people that were praised for their voice. So the people that, you know, their parents said, oh, your, your voice is beautiful. You're going to become a superstar. They always got the solos. And that was my experience. And I, you know, the only thing that I loved about my identity growing up was my voice. Right. And so then you get into kind of a perfectionism um, spiral, unfortunately. But it is still that whole idea of not being good enough. And then when you get criticised, so the, the people that have been told that they're not good enough by other people and that they're not talented go, okay, well, there's somebody that's told me exactly what everyone else told me, so it's confirmation that I'm terrible. Right. Yeah. Whereas the people that have been praised their whole lives, it completely unravels them mm. because they, they believe that that's one of the best things about them. And, the, you know, that was their, their whole thing that they were holding on to about being good enough. So I've really had to work at that. Um, and I say, like, poor me, I was, I was praised for my voice. I, I don't mean to kind of <laughs> come at it like that because I, I love that, you know, people were, were so nice to me about my voice. But right. it does become quite damaging because as soon as somebody says, yeah, that one thing that you thought was okay um, is not okay, it, it's really tough to deal with. So I think... What I've managed to do, and I've, I've read a lot about it, I love um, Brene Brown's uh, TED Talk yeah. that, that's about if you're not in the arena, if you're not out there doing what I'm doing. So if there's a drunk guy at the pub that I'm performing in and he's yelling out that I'm terrible, I'm thinking, when have you got yourself on stage? You yeah. know, have you, do you want to come up and do a song and see how everybody else, you know, um, <laughs> responds to this? So that's the first thing that I ask. Is this person somebody that would be brave enough to do what I'm doing? Would they put themselves out there in this way? And do they know anything about the voice? Do they know anything about what I do? And so that can be anything, you know, if you're doing public speaking, same thing. If somebody's criticizing you, have they been on the stage? Have they done what you've done? But also to allow yourself to be hurt, I think is important. Yeah, right. We tend to try to go, okay, I'm gonna get over that and I'm just gonna push through it. Yeah. Um, I think if you need a day or a day and a half to sit with a bottle of wine and some chocolate and cry into, you know, <laughs> or, into or some butt, cheese, anything. And, and what I like to do is go, why did that trigger me so much? Yeah, Where exactly. did that come from? Why was that so hurtful? Because it says something about me and what I can work on as well as something about them. I mean, look, most of the time it's their stuff. You know, we've triggered something in them too, but you want to use it as a lesson so that you can get better and better at bouncing back because we've got to be resilient when we're, um, when we're artists because yeah, we're going to absolutely. constantly be putting ourselves out there, falling flat on our face, and it's really about, I think, how we get up that's important. Yeah. As I've mentioned, I lady stalk you. But <laughs> uh, I noticed on your website that allowing people... Uh, people allowing themselves to be vulnerable is tough. And one of my favorite quotes from Mother Teresa is that honesty and transparency make you vulnerable. Be honest and transparent anyway. Mm. So I think that it's one of the most courageous things that you can do as a, a performer or just as a, a human being is actually to be um, vulnerable. And what, is, what does that actually mean? I, I think that it means that you are being yourself. You're, you're being completely authentic. You're um, daring to just put 
your voice and your ideas out there as they are um, and not hiding yourself and not kind of, you know, putting that mask on in front of others. And the way that I've, I've experienced that is when I go to perform thinking, nothing about my technique and just dropping into the moment and letting my emotions kind of actually paint the picture. And that sounds really scary for a lot of people because you've got to let go of control. As soon as you start to control the voice to, to do the perfect note, um, it, it feels really scary. But that's kind of the whole point is to just allow yourself to connect with the audience and communicate in that really authentic way rather than being like, okay, well, I've got to sing this in a, in a chest dominant mix and I've got to shout, shape my vowel like this and my tongue's got to be doing this because it's so contrived. It's the letting go that is the really vulnerable part and I think you can feel that in a performance. There's a little spark there, I think, when they're just really in the moment and and communicating in that way. It has been amazing having you here. I just wanted to wrap up with something from your book that I loved. Yeah. And it really aligns with Find Your Voice's message as well, that music is powerful and we all have a voice. Using that voice to incite positive change outside of yourself is essential, not just to improve society and the world we live in, but for your peace of mind. To know that you've contributed that you've helped to spread joy and compassion and taken a stand for what you believe in. I just want to say preach. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I love it. I Look, I just, I want to show you again, everyone, my very battered <laughs> copy of The Moderately Tortured Artist. It's like having a really good friend in your handbag on the days when you need it. And that is definitely what you are. You're an incredible <laughs> uh, person and a wonderful singing teacher. Kimberly, you also teach online. I do, yes. 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 So yes. if you're looking for a really great singing teacher, this lady's got my vote. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thanks for having me. It's been, it's been my amazing. pleasure. <laughs> this is Emanuela Grace for Find Your Voice TV. Hi, I'm Kimberly Smith from InspiredToSing.com and if you would like to get your hands on a copy of The Moderately Tortured Artist, you can go to ModeratelyTorturedArtist.com. I know it's a long URL. Or you can also get it on Amazon and Kindle. Mm -hmm.